Our next speaker is Ian uh, Johnston, who's the CEO of Engini. But before leading Engini, Ian spent eight years working for Volkswagen before transitioning into uh, renewables, where he led the deployment of over 100 clean energy projects. Ian has two young daughters, and he is determined to build a business that contributes a tangible improvement to the world that they will grow up and live in. So many of our motivations are about that and the next generation. A warm welcome to Ian. Thank you. Rachel, thank you, and uh, thank you for your time today. So the question we've been asked to consider today is, can e-mobility help address the climate crisis? And I come at that issue both as the CEO of Ingeni, but also as the father of two young girls. And of course, my answer is we must grab this opportunity to make that change now. For most of us in the room, 2050 feels a very long way away. I think there's some in the room that can't currently see past October 31st, but that's getting into the B word, so we'll leave that alone. But 2050 is a long way away. But my youngest daughter will be just 31 uh, by that time. Yet the world that she will live in will be very different to life as we know and enjoy it today. So we have to make this change. And the need for a change in our transportation system is undeniable. We have to move people from diesel and petrol into electric vehicles. So as the CEO of Ingeni, I'm, I'm privileged to lead the team at such an exciting time. And we have a great opportunity ahead of us. But there's also a heavy responsibility on our shoulders and on the shoulders of the other charging networks. And I say this because the barriers that have historically stopped people from switching to EVs are quickly becoming a thing of the past, as you've heard already today. So the latest EV models now boast an average range of over 250 miles. Bloomberg will tell us that we can achieve cost parity in 2022, four years earlier than their previous estimate. And on top of this, we're now seeing huge private investment into infrastructure for charging from companies like Ingeni, like the deal we've announced today to put chargers across Cardiff city centre. So what that leaves is one final hurdle, and it's a psychological hurdle. The fear of the hassle that is public charging. We charging networks have a responsibility to make it an, as easy and as clean as possible for drivers to find and use public charging stations. The experience is critical. So the charging networks have to deploy chargers in locations that are convenient, in environments that are comfortable for drivers, and not just where the grid is. Now, yes, if you were to look on your ZapMap app now, you will see over 2,000 rapid chargers in the UK. But some of those are in dreadful places, and I've been to some that you wouldn't want your worst enemies to spend time at. And this is one of the reasons why we're working with the Martins Group, now, in this deal, we're spending over £15 million pound deploying 400 rapid chargers at Marston's restaurants across the UK. And what that means is that our charging sites have warm food and drink, toilets, Wi-Fi, and other facilities on some of the UK's busiest roads. But delivering a good experience is more than just where you locate the chargers. We have to do more. Some of the members of this panel are leading the work in the important area of interoperability where members of charging networks can use chargers from other networks across Europe. And this is important because we can't have a situation where a customer arrives at a charger and has to register before being able to use it. This will not work for the millennial mass market. But in the UK, we can do more. All of you in this room are already members of the biggest interoperability network, the contactless bank card. Myself and the Ingenie team had the pleasure of attending the Fully Charged Live event. And we spoke to over 400 customers, real EV drivers, living this situation every day. And their feedback was unanimous. We love contactless charging. We hate registering for use. So from our perspective, it's simple. There's only one solution that drivers will accept and will demand going forward. And that's the ability to use all chargers with a contactless bank card or a mobile wallet. If the charging networks are not easy to use, drivers will not move from their diesel vehicles to electric vehicles. But there's more we can do. There's a lot more we can do. Charging networks need to work across industries to make their networks as open and wide as possible. And integration is key. Our landlord partners tell us that they want us to integrate seamlessly into their existing customer experiences. One great example of this is a partnership with Allstar. Under this, over 1 million fleet drivers and fleet managers can use the UK's leading fuel card to pay for EV charging with a simple tap at all of our charging stations. A second example is our partnership with Octopus Energy. Here, drivers can use their home energy tariff 
to enjoy discounts on the public charging network, saving them money, but also demystifying the concerns about how public charging works. So, in summary, the charging networks have a responsibility to make it as simple as possible for, for drivers to transition to an EV. We have to remove the fear that exists today about public charging, and we have to find innovative ways to collaborate across industries to make our networks truly open and truly wide. And if we do all of this, I think we will be successful in helping drivers make that change. But there's one more reason why I personally believe that we will be successful. And that's because on this stage in this room, there are some brilliant new companies challenging the norms and driving a change. But in this EV movement, the startups are not alone. From EDF to Shell to Volkswagen, some of the biggest and most powerful companies in the world are in this room. And they are reinventing themselves, striving to meet the shift in customer demand to deliver a cleaner and better future. And it's for that reason that I believe e-mobility can help solve the climate crisis in the next 10 years. Thank you.